What up, Doc? It may be the most important period in anyone's life. I am uber excited. Those unforgettable four years that are otherwise known as high school. If you want some, in the time when young people often rebel against the status quo as they search for their place in the world. No pants day. Come on, people, no pants day. On this special edition of True Life, you'll follow three students from two very different schools as they push boundaries. I don't know what my father's gonna say. And question authority. How soon will these measures take place? On their way to self-discovery. I'm getting a B. I'm getting a B. Brittany is a good student, but is tired of her dad's strict ways. If you come over to my house and my father's not there, that's bad. If I get caught, yeah, it'd be worth it. Will defying her father get her heart broken and mean the end to her college dreams? We need some punishment to help you step it up. A bird, bird, bird. Seemingly happy-go-lucky John is in turmoil from his mother's chronic illness. Do I have to spell it out for you? Um, ass. Will he learn to harness his anger and prosper despite the pain it's brought to his life? This gets so damn frustrated. <laughs> So we could Anthony is not afraid to challenge his administration to make his school a better place. I think I need to do something about this lunch. Oh, yeah. The hot dog is green. But can he keep from failing and finally graduate so he can one day change the world? For me to pass for the year, I have to get an A on the final. <laughs> They're young, falling in love, fighting with mom and dad. It's ridiculous, mom. No, you're, you're, you're my concern. And mostly, discovering themselves. I think I'm kind of about to relax from the whole relationship thing. What will they really learn? Find out next on True Life, I'm Surviving High School. Science! Journal, boys have been so meager lately. Is it feasible to just meet a normal guy? Mom always said that you'll fall in love about a thousand times, so this should be fun. I'm just very ambivalent about whether or not I want to play that game. My name's Brittany. I'm a junior at Science High School. I live in Newark with my father. Ready? Mm-hmm. Before I moved with my father, I lived with my mom. My parents, they've been split up for a long time now. I came to Newark to go to school. Like, in order to go to science, you need to live in Newark. So I moved in with my father to get the address, basically. What's wrong with you this morning? It's Monday. When I moved in with my father, it was a serious, serious kick in the face. Put your front wife on. I didn't really know him that well, and it's kind of hard living under his rules all of a sudden and seeing him as an authoritative figure when really before he was just a child support check. Now you can see. It took a while for me to get used to him, and I'm still not, which is why we don't really talk. You know me getting into the right lane up ahead. He really doesn't get along very well with my mother, and I see my mother as my best friend. So if you don't get along with my mother, then you don't get along with me. Science is located right downtown. We have to stand in line for the metal detectors every morning. The facilities are definitely not up to par. The hallways are like really small. The paint's chipping. The top floors are condemned. It's ridiculous. Do you think today deserves a one-minute quiz? No! Despite our facilities, it's a top school in Newark. It prepares you for college. With the workload and everything, we get a serious workload. Person, so unless I have to repeat myself 12 times, I'm gonna wait till everybody shows up. Supposedly, junior year is one of the most important years. From what my guidance counselors have told me, it's the year to buckle down. Your junior year is when I have some opportunity for programs for you. I have Project C where you will do research at a college or a university. All you need is a 3.0, a 3.0 GPA, which is good because all you guys are 3.0 or above. It's like college time now. You take SATs and you start like applying to college. It's really stressful. I'm not ready. Most of my pressure, it comes from my father. My father cuts me no slack when it comes to grades. All right, everyone. Get out your journal entries, put them on your desk. I used to be more focused freshman, sophomore year. But like now that it's junior year, I'm dating a lot. I'm going out a lot. When I call your name, come up with your journal entries. I'm going to check them. And then after that, we're going to read them and you can ask questions. All right, I don't have all eight. I have
have the most recent. I must admit, I've been choosing the social life over the homework, and my grades are suffering. I know that. Do we still get a zero, though? I care about my grades, I do, but it's not my main focus. Now I'm more focused on like boys, boys and more boys. There's some crazy things I've heard about you. Me? I wouldn't say I've lost my priorities, I've just put it into my perspective. Not my father's perspective, my perspective. You trying to give me a dollar so I shake my booty? Junior year is supposed to be about SATs and figure out what college you want to go to. But I beg to differ because for me, junior year means hanging out more and kind of like testing the limits. So that's basically what I'm gonna do. Why shouldn't I? <laughs> this is uh, my little Star Trek uniform here. It's, uh, it's quite cool. Whenever us nerds talk about nerd things, we always use the uh, nerd voice, the, uh, the, uh, the asthmatic sound in our voice with yeah, the drilling sound whenever we talk about really cool video cards or uh, hyper starting on our processor. It's <laughs> so cool. I'm John, and I go to Riverdale High School, and I'm a sophomore. This is Queen. This is not. In a spectrum of kids, I fall right in, you know, plump position of a nerd. I'm into everything like, you know, computer games and movies and reading and writing. I do everything but physical activity. Movie, later. Why well, pay for anything? <laughs> Riverdale is definitely like a country club. It's centered in the suburbs of New Jersey. People are extremely well off. The senior parking lot is full of beautiful cars. Hummer is BMWs, Mercedes. So the standard Riverdale kid is the very in-crowd type of person. One of my friends used to describe him as the kids from Saved by the Bell. In the, the ranges of Riverdale in wealth, I'm definitely middle class. I'm very comfortable with my economic status. Possessions and crap like that don't really catch my fancy, but to other people in this town, it's very important. Anybody who volunteers to play sports should examine themselves. I'm very quick to say that I'm a nerd because I am a nerd. My friends and I wouldn't pick anything else. We've decided that the nerd way of life is the way. But I, I do have this like this passport to interact with other cliques, and that's called my humor. You're not wearing any pants! <laughs> I just realized that too! Hey John, did you wake up this morning and forget to put on pants? <laughs> yes. I'm labeled the fat, jolly kid who's always making jokes. John is a very funny character. Everyone knows him as the silly one. He's hilarious! He's kind of weird, but he's really funny. <laughs> Corson, how you doing? How's it up? Jolly Fat Kid, that title came from elementary school. I used to have to use it as my little defense mechanism towards fat jokes towards me. Before they'd have the chance to make a joke, I'd make the joke towards myself. Hey, let's break these boxes. Jump, jump, jump. more time. <laughs> I've done the Jolly Fat Kid forever. It's really hard to prevent from doing it. Done! We've accomplished something. <laughs> Humor helps me cope with a lot of stuff. <laughs> Home life. I've been dealt the crappiest hand ever. Johnny. What, Mom? What are you doing tomorrow after school? Um, my mom has been diagnosed with MS. She's had it for several years. I was around 11 when they found out that she had it. Multiple sclerosis is a disease that affects the central nervous system. It's one of the worst diseases because it doesn't necessarily kill you, but over a period of time, it, it kind of disables you. She gets tired very quickly. She doesn't have a lot of energy. Every night, she gets a shot in her arm. She, she can't do much. Her ability or lack thereof to do things really forced me to grow up quickly and to take more responsibility. I'm gonna run downstairs and put a load in. Uh, do my own laundry, vacuum, and wash linens and towels and crap. I hate doing laundry. I haven't told anybody. My friends have no idea. I really didn't want that pity that people get. I wanted just to, to live the normal way any kid would without a mom with my mask. I don't know what it is. I guess humor is more natural to me and that comes out the most. But I wouldn't like just to be known as the guy with the jokes. There's more to me than that. I want to show people my more passion, my more serious side. Okay, this year, me and my friends are making a movie. I'm presenting the idea, come here. Our goal is to get it done by May when the school film festival is. I feel this film festival is gonna be a big thing. So I'm pushing everybody to do it. Okay, I'm only gonna give you half of it because the rest of it isn't done. The film won't necessarily change me, but 
Hopefully the film will change other people's thoughts on me. They see that and they say, wow, I came from John Milano, that, that jolly fat kid. I guess he really isn't just a guy full of jokes. My whole dream for sophomore year is to get my movie done, to change people's view on me as a person, and um, we talk about my mother's multiple sclerosis. I'm definitely putting a lot of pressure on myself, but this is my goal and I really want to do it. But I must get this done. I change and I organize student protests. I speak at these rallies and I tolerate those boring leadership meetings. <laughs> My name is Anthony and I go to Science High School and I'm a senior. For the past couple of years, I have to live like an adult. I don't live with my parents anymore and I live with my grandmother, but she's hardly ever around. So I basically live alone. It's Monday. When I was growing up in South Jersey, my father was in the army and my mom worked two jobs. So basically I was raising my three younger brothers. Mitch Mass socks. It was too stressful, so I moved out of there and moved up with my grandmother in Newark. My grandmother, she gets up at, um, I don't know, she gets up at like 5 o'clock and she's out of here by 6. I never see her anybody in the morning. Sometimes it gets lonely around here and I miss my brothers, but I realize I need to be away from them in order to focus on my education. Is this a bus that comes at 710? No. No, there's that. No one forces me to go to school, but I choose to go to school anyway. But it's hard to motivate myself every day. I'm tired. That's what parents are supposed to be there for, to motivate you. The reason why I go to school is because I know uh, generally in the future that I have to, to have an education as a background to achieving the goals that I want to achieve. Let's go. My goals are basically to go into politics and change the face of the world. I just want to be the politician who is for the people again. I used to be depressed because I was taking care of myself and supporting myself. You know what the funny thing is? There's nobody there. And I'm involved in a lot of activities outside of class. And this is helping me, you know, combat that depression. I'm vice president of the student union. I'm a columnist for The Word, which is an underground newspaper. And I'm always trying to prove the school and I'm always speaking out about things. That's part of my personality. It comes from growing up without having a lot and not being able to do as many things as I would like to do. Look at this line. One of my personal projects is the improving the school lunch. Let me get a... Uh... A hot dog. The lunches at her school are uh, are horrendous. Oh, man, this lunch tastes like. What? I think what? the hot dog is green. I've been heckling the staff, basically taunting them, saying that the lunches they're serving us are horrible. How many times have I come here and they have? What the hell is that? We need to raise the quality of the of the food here. I want the good stuff. <laughs> I'm not afraid to challenge authority, and on many occasions I will challenge authority. I think I need to do something about this lunch. Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you? We're commandeering your. Uh... Yes, so I heard. All the heckling and the complaining about the school lunches has caused a, a meeting with me and the board of education at our school. <sighs> High school is more than learning out of books. You're supposed to have like real life situations, real life problems. Are we settled? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. You learn through that that you can have a voice, you can have an opinion, and you can be an effective power in your community, in your school. The food quality here at Science High is very low. The food is, is not well kept. It's cold, it's stale, it's um, soggy sometimes. Uh, discolored, uh, the, you know, the hot dogs were green for, you know, a portion of time. Those issues will be addressed, okay? Quality will improve. How soon will these measures take place? Next week, next Two month, weeks. next year? Two weeks you will see an improvement in quality. Two weeks you will see an improvement in the level of service provided by the staff. And we can hold you to this. My word, Mr. Diaz. Diaz is my bond.
They were very receptive. The only thing is, is, you know, we know adults are like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. So after the meeting, I suggested that all the officials go down to the lunchroom to see it for themselves. We should all eat lunch right, right in the cafeteria. Yeah. See, if we... <laughs> see who could finish their meal. <laughs> <laughs> It was clear nobody wanted to eat the food, but I really wanted them to see the lunch. I was really serious about it. I can't wait to be a part of that taste testing. Uh, <laughs> Here's where I take my uh, depression pills before I eat lunch. I had the administration right where I wanted them. Here's where I take my uh, depression pills before I eat lunch. They were finally gonna see how bad the school lunch was. Look at the peas! Look at the shells! The stuffed shells are stuffed shells. They have peas that look like peas. It looks like food now. I was surprised that the food was fixed immediately. I guess the school did it in order not to look bad in front of all the representatives. You see these improvements? Isn't that what you wanted? Finally, Ms. Taylor. We aim to oh, your please. Hair starts I started complaining about the food, and now, now they're starting to get shit done. What do you think improved about the lunch? Uh, color. Color? It's only February. <laughs> Hopefully, the improvements can last until the end of the year. Then they say we don't do anything. You see this? You see the food? We appreciate all of this. Hopefully it's a continuing effort. As soon as uh, you guys leave, we don't want it to go down again. We have voices and people need, you know, they need to start realizing to voice your opinion is like the greatest gift in the world. I forgot my paper. I forgot my paper, Mr. Ricky. The meeting took all morning, which is a problem because I missed a lot of classes and I'm not doing too high in school right now. I don't want this. Like, I, I don't want to yes. go working to support myself and nobody at home to push me has had a negative effect on my grades. It's not that I like it. I didn't fail. <laughs> if I don't pass all my classes, then I won't get to walk in graduation. And I want my brothers to see me up there. I really need to get it together because I'm my brother's role model and I know they look up to me. D minus. I'm doing good this time. <laughs> I want them to see that I can make it even when I'm on my own. The will and Sally, I was checking out equipment. It's February, and this weekend we start filming. Getting the PD-150 through-chip camera, the Sennheiser mic, and the boomstick. I have a part in the script called Fantasy Shot, which is basically just signs and people, landscapes, and that's what I'm going to be filming this weekend. I'm kind of nervous. Wanted to, you know, go off right. Beautiful. There we go. The movie means so much to me because I want to relay this message of carpe diem, seize the day. And the movie is all about this one guy who lives his life each day the same thing and no, no change. So when he wakes up one morning living his life the normal way, he's killed. And he finds out that the afterlife is this terrible disappointment and he finds out that he should have lived life to the fullest. And in a way, that's what I'm really afraid of, that I'm not going to live life to the fullest and I'm going to miss out on something. So. In relation to that and my mom, I think my mom wishes that she did more before she got sick. I think it went very well. I think I got a lot of good stuff. Now, oh, McGrew, you've done it again. Regan was so important for me. I'm supposed to be fucking to schoolwork, but I've just been putting my energy elsewhere. Every Monday, I come back with a story. Friday, I go home and sleep the week off, do no homework. And Saturday, I'm either with my best friend or with some guy. And Sundays is pretty much just church and mom, and then it's back to school. But I always have a story to tell about Saturday, always. <laughs> that night, I'm going over Erica's house for like a little sleepover party thing she's having. 
I'm excited about Erica's sleepover, mainly because it's gonna be guys there. And it's just way more fun because instead of talking about guys, we can mess with them. I look pretty dumb carrying a doll outside, don't I? Recently, an ex-boyfriend of mine broke my heart. So I guess you could say I'm looking for a boyfriend. It's just kind of like I'm single, and if a guy comes along that seems like he has potential, I'll take him up on that offer. You think we should have bought our umbrellas? My dad doesn't know that guys will be at the summer party, because if he knew, then I wouldn't be going. I have a lot expected of tonight, a whole lot. The most stereotypical doll ever made in, in the United States no, look history. look at the lips. Look at the lips. We should sue the okay. manufacturers. <laughs> She's an African-American. Yeah. Project Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. When I first got there, Erica's boyfriend was there and James. <laughs> Leave her alone! Leave her alone! <laughs> 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 Dancing to a James goes to Eastside High. It's like 20 minutes away from science. He's a single man right here, so yeah. he, he hoping to get all the action. <laughs> I was attracted to James when I first saw him. He was like really funny. <laughs> to me, he was the life of the party because he kept making me laugh over and over again. Okay, ready? Let's play. I felt like I didn't have to do any like work in order to be around him. What you looking at, James? Okay. Erica, left foot red. I was really comfortable around him, and he was easy to talk to. Your right foot red. <laughs> we kind of clicked, and you know, one thing led to another. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I kind of like got close with James last night, but I guess James like got upset with me because I was talking about other guys in front of him. I think I think I'm just substituting for what I really, really, really want. I didn't even notice that I was like saying things right in front of him that offended him a little. Yeah, that makes me desperate. What the? Dave, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so come on, why you stop talking to me? Huh? Why you stop talking to me? I just felt like you just kept talking about other dudes and all that. I know. All right, my bad. I was. That's because I'm going through something, though. Oh, boy. I, okay. In a nutshell, recently, right, got my whole heart broken by this guy, right? So here comes you. And it's like, um, would I just be adding to the list if I was to talk to you? Or would you really be something for real? You like me? Yeah. For real? Yeah. You're not going to reject me? I just don't need no bullshit, you know? Well, you do know that. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of like it went from nothing to something really fast. You know, you should come back outside. I wonder why? Because, uh, because you just should. I don't know what my father's reaction will be, but I can't go around making him feel good. I have to do what works for me. Can I spell it out for you? Um, ass. Every Riverdale student is required to take a physical, and today is the day in which I am going to the doctor. It's not something I love to go to. I think everything will be fine. I haven't any yet. I'm all a little overweight. I honestly don't think it will fix my health whatsoever, so you know what? We were on the way to the doctor, and I didn't want to really talk about the whole weight issue before getting there, because I knew the doctor was going to mention it. I didn't want to get into that whole festival of arguments. I've had a weight problem all my life. Can we drop the subject? Come on back. Physical time. First thing is height and weight. Five feet, five and a half inches. Height and weight's the best part, because you always expect yourself to be slim and really tall, and you get shot down both field. Okay, rear weight. Okay. It's the same thing every doctor's appointment. They say, you're perfect health now, but wait until Sorry. Sorry. Do you have a bigger one? Sorry. 
Oh, okay. Is there you want to just come in the office very quickly? Sure. Yeah. All right. At this point in his life, I think you need to just kind of understand that it's a, it's an issue for the future. And he hears it from me every time he comes in for a checkup. But at some point, I think he needs a little bit of focus on that. The last time he had any type of screening lab work was four years ago. And this is the type of, this is the age where I like to run another battery of tests. When people do this and if anything comes back abnormal, from my point of view, it's a little bit more ammunition to kind of work on the kids too, to make them say, okay, now, now I'm not invincible anymore. And when I get the results, I call you. All right, thank you. We'll see you next year. Bye. 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 With all the, the factors that lay before me, the, the jokes and the potential health problems, being an overweight person, I can't spend my whole life worrying about this stuff. I'm going to take you to the blood work on Saturday. Then you're going to fast, which means... Wait, I'm fasting now? You can't live in the now worrying about stuff that might happen later. That's not a part of me and my personality. I have an eating competition on Friday. What? I have an eating competition of bananas on Friday. Oh. <laughs> After I mentioned to my mom that I was going to be in an eating contest, she just freaked out, and before you know it, we were in a big argument. I want to talk to you. Oh, God. Yeah, sit down. You don't want me to do it. I won't do it, I swear. Well, you have, you know, what's more important? I enjoy doing the eating contest because they're, it's something I'm, I'm good at. I'm the unofficial eating contest champion of my high school. I had to go defend my title. All you said I want was... you to do, I just don't want you to take, you know, partake in that, in that contest, that's all. I'm, okay, I don't want you to do a scholarship show. Why? So I can, I can be the blunt of you, of you and your father making, making jokes that's with me? That's how we deal with your situation. Okay, that's how we deal with the situation. People deal with these things, we, in other ways, we deal with it what through situation? humor. You, your situation. Do I have to spell it out for you? Say M S. You, got, you no, better say it. Because there's no need to say it. It's already on the ground. I love my mom with all my heart, but um, there's definitely some anger I've harbored from that illness. It takes up a lot of my free time to deal with it. Not just, you know, the physical stuff that I have to do. Just, you know, emotionally sometimes I get, I get very upset with it. It kind of puts a lot of pressure on you. Wait, you think eating a bunch of bananas is gonna get your mind off the fact that I have MS? No, it's nothing, it's just to have fun. I don't need things to get my mind off that. Go to movies, and I totally forgot I even have parents. It's, it's hard dealing with it. It's tough making sense of it all. And when I do argue with her, like passionately argue with her, I do mention MS a lot, and that always upsets her. And I know it's going to upset her. It sounds like a bastard thing to do, but you just, you want to yell at her and say, you know what? Because it's, it's, her disease is the orb of the situation. We're all evolving around that. I love you, Mom. I wouldn't make jokes if I didn't love you. You should know that by now. I guess it, I was just doing it because I was so damn upset about it. It's Friday, and James and I are going to the mall. I've been dating Jane for about two weeks now. Because James goes to Eastside and I go to Science, the time we do see each other is after school or on weekends. Going to um, interview today at Macy's. I hope I get a job, because um, I really need one. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you like the brokest man alive. Because you hear that? It's not good. <laughs> I did feel kind of awkward at first, but like as soon as he started making jokes, I was like, okay. My favorite story is Victoria's Secret. Great, James. <laughs> How great. When we're together, we're friends, but more than friends, I can joke around with him and things like that, but at the same time, I can like also like kiss him or whatever. So he's like a friend and a boyfriend. So what stories you want to All of them? All of what? <laughs> when I'm with him, it's all cool and laid back. <laughs> He's a smooth brother. <laughs> Since I haven't seen Brittany in a week, it's good to be in the mall with her, walk around with her. I think we're, we'll be staying together. She's down for anything, and that's what I like about her. And plus, it always helps to be cute in the face, you know? <laughs> James, I guess what I did, guess what I did. They was like on clearance, I have to show you. Look. 
<laughs> I told my mom about James, but my father doesn't know anything at all. Like, I just think the more I tell him, the more he, like, want to, like, put restraints on me and stuff like that, and I don't want to be bothered. You're mine. Huh? I ain't, I ain't get you any, bro. <laughs> it's kind of like he's my father, and then there's my personal life. If he happens to notice something, then he does. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. His opinion doesn't matter much to me. I'm just doing what I want to do. Today, I'm meeting up with two Kellys and Elizabeth, and I'm going to get my nose pierced. I've been wanting to get my nose pierced for like a year now. And I was actually gonna do it with my mom, but she's taking too long. So I'm just gonna do it by myself. 